So today we're going to start the third chapter. We're just going to keep going because it seems like a nice thing to do. So let me put the chanting up on the screen for you and we will begin. One day Guru Nam Charanaravinde Sandarishita Swatma Sukhava Bode Nishreya Se Jangarikaya Mane Samsara Hala Hala Moha Shantye Abahu Purusha Karam Sham Kachakrasi Darinam Sahasra Shirasam Shwetam Pranamami Patanjalim Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Sharirasya Chavaidya Kena Yopakarotam Pravaram Muninam Patanjalim Pranjali Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejaspi Navati Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amrutam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Om Ganana Am Twa Ganapati Gum Hava Mahe Kavin Kavina Mupamashravastamam Jeshtarajam Brahmanam Brahmanaspatana Shrinvanu tibisida sadhanam Mahagana patahe namaha Om Prano devi saraswati vaje bir vajani vati Dinama vitri avatu Bhagdevyai namaha Om Namo Brahma Vidyo Brahma Vidya Sampradaya Kartrupyo Namo Vam Sharashibyo Namo Mahadyo Namo Guru Pyaha Sargo Paplavarahita Pragnana Ghana Pratigarto Brahmahai Vahamasmi Om Tatsatu Om Swasti Prajabya have paripalayantam Nyayena Margena Mahi Mahishaha Go Brahmanebya Shubamastu Nityam Lokaha Samastaha Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Om Paramatmane Namaha Sri Patanjala Yoga Darshanam Atavibhuti Padaha Desha Bandaha Chittasya Dharana Again, Desha Bandaha Chittasya Dharana Once more, Desha Bandaha 
Chittasya Dharana. Number two, Tatra Pratyaya Eka Tanata Dhyanam. Again, Tatra Pratyaya Eka Tanata Dhyanam. Tatra Pratyaya Eka Tanata Dhyanam. And the third one, again three times. Tat eva artha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi. Tat eva artha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi. Tat eva artha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi. Next sutra, trayam ekatra sainyamaha. Trayam ekatra sainyamaha. Trayam ekatra. Sainyamaha Tat Jayat Pragna Alokaha Tat Jayat Pragna Alokaha Tat Jayat Pragna Alokaha Tasya Bhumishu Vini yoga ha tasya bhumi shu vini yoga ha tasya bhumi shu vini yoga ha trayam antar angam purve bhya ha trayam antar angam purve bhya ha trayam Antar angam purve bhyaha Tat api bahis angam nirbijasya Tat api bahir angam nirbijasya Tat api bahir angam nirbijasya Tadapi bahirangam nirbijasya. The first date again. The first line and then the second line. Desha bandaha chittasya dharana. Desha bandhas chittasya dharana. Again, second line. Desha bandhas chittasya dharana. First line once, second line twice. Tatra pratyaya eka tanata dhyanam. Tatra pratyaya eka tanata dhyanam. Tatra pratyaya eka tanata dhyanam. Tat eva artha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi. Tat eva artha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi. Tadevartha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam iva samadhi. Trayam ekatra sainyamaha. Trayam ekatra sainyamaha. Trayam ekatra sainyamaha. Tad jayat pragnya alokaha. Tad Jayat Pragnya Lokaha Tat 
ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾಲೋಕ ತೂಮಿಷು ವಿಯೋಗ ತೂಮಿಷು ವಿಯೋಗ ತೂಮಿಷು ವಿಯೋಗ ಅಂಥಾರ್ ಅಂಗಂ ಪೂರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ಅಂತರಂಗಂ ಪೂರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ತ್ರಯಮಂತರಂಗಂ ಪೂರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ತತ್ ಅಪಿ ಪಹಿಸ್ ಅಂಗಂ ನಿರ್ಬೀಜ ತದಿ ಬಹಿರಂಗಂ ನಿರ್ಬೀಜ ತದಿ ಬಹಿರಂಗಂ ನಿರ್ಬೀಜ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 Right, so with the eight limbs of Ashtanga Yoga, Ashtao Angani, the eight limbs, there's five we just covered from the Sadhanapada. And then the next three are in the Vibhutipada, the third chapter. Sadhanapada is the second chapter that we just completed. Ah. Uh, So the first three sutras are going to be the first three or the last three limbs. So Patanjali divides these up into, calls them internal and external. The external ones supposedly you can practice and a teacher can assist you. And the internal limbs are just about the state of your attention. So it's internal. The teacher can't give you an adjustment. with your attention he can only try to point or direct so this subject the first three sutras are the first three limbs there's only one sutra per limb and but the subject uh, is discussed up till sutra eight I think the the main pivot to me is the pranayama and working through the three the three levels that we discussed last last time uh and getting where you can feel like you can move your like if you can feel sensation in your body that's basically the level how you relate to prana So if you can put your mind somewhere in your body and then you can start to feel the sensation becoming more present that's the prana becoming more active or or more full in that area as your attention becomes more present and the sensation becomes more tangible to you by putting your attention there that's that's how we learn to relate to prana and move prana through the body So that's a much different way of relating to the breathing and controlling our prana than just by inhaling and exhaling and holding our breath. That uh, we start to feel the different subtle anatomies in the body and are able to kind of navigate our attention through the body and in that way as our mind is moving through the body the prana is moving through the body with the mind. Of course the prana is also moving through the body with the autonomical subconscious functionalities but then it's also where the mind goes the prana will follow or your mind moves how the mind is uh, the quality of the mind that will influence and affect the quality of the prana so as that starts to mature 
that becomes the juxtaposition from the second chapter into the third chapter. The first chapter, you know how to keep your vehicle going straight down the road, or you know how to recognize when it's not going straight down the road and you need to adjust it. And the second chapter, you're learning more about how to operate the, the stick shift and the pedals and, and the steering wheel and all these things to understand it. Well, I, I went out of the lane because I, because when I turned to look at my friend, oh, I turned the wheel at the same time. <laughs> right? So you're noticing these patterns when you're doing things and responding and you're starting to get a, a better sense of why the system goes out of balance in the first place. So in the third chapter, we're going to look at this first opening discussion is on attention. So we get a better understanding of how to cultivate our attention so that our system has a stronger disposition for remaining stable in its focus and coloring what it's looking at less. But that's not the main subject of the third chapter. The main subject of the third chapter is actually to go through different aspects of yourself like specific things that Patanjali is going to list for us. Like, like how we superimpose our own thoughts onto what our friend is tell, telling us. We hear the words, and then we have so much baggage attached to the language, to the words, our own ideas of what words mean, that we hear what we're projecting rather than what the, our friend is trying to express to us. So that's the first thing actually that gets listed. The first sign yama, the first object of meditation. The focus on how we superimpose meaning onto the sounds and the words that we listen to. So there's a few different things there and there's a, a few places in the body that he wants us to look at and clean up and organize and strengthen. So the first sutra, we got to get through the, the technical foundation first. Desha bandhas chittasya dharana Desha bandhas chittasya dharana So dharana, the uh, sixth limb, is to purposely or consciously put your attention in a place, to secure or fix your attention to a place. Desha, Bandha, Chitta, Dharana. Desha, Bandha, Chitta, Dharana. Four words. So Desha means place. Bandha means like Mula Bandha means lock or bind. Chitta is referring to our, our psyche, our consciousness, our mind, our mind in the larger sense of the word. And Dardana means what is just said here, Desha Bandha Chittasya. So we're not going to give an English word to Dardana. So to fix your attention to a place, whether that place is in your body or outside of your body as an object, or it could even be an idea if you're focused on solving a problem at work and your mind is focused on that problem. Right? Or it could be like uh, meditation. You're focused on a, cultivating a certain feeling or visualizing um, a deity or something. A lot of the the tantra practices involve all kinds of elaborate visualizations. So and this is the this fixation of our attention on anything. Right here, there, he's using the word desha, place. Right? But that place, if it's a place in your mind or a place in your body or a place, an object outside of your 
your body. This fixation of your attention is the first step of meditation. That you make a conscious effort to contain your mind within the boundaries of that location you chose, that object you chose. The first step. So, so meditation or yoga is not stopping the mind. Right? When we talk about we're putting our mind on something, we go back to the first chapter and Patanjali has taught us that the mind has faculties. It can do things. It can um, perceive. It can reason. It has creative thought. It can sleep. And there's memory. The five faculties. So even if your mind, if you're not thinking, like with language, uh, there's not a dialogue of using language going through your head, there's still some faculty, there's still some function of your mind. This is the thing that we need to understand that just because we're not thinking with language, if we're perceiving more, we're listening, looking, or feeling more, we're not using our language side of our mind, that's still a faculty of the mind. We don't want to lose our mind. Our mind is a powerful tool. So if, after you fix your mind, if your mind can stay there and it starts to become easily there, then dhyana. Tatra pratyayaika tanata dhyanam. Tatra pratyayaika tanata dhyanam. So from dharana, if the mind flows, like with a single, a singularity, a single thought process, then this state of attention has become smooth from dharana into dhyana. When it's dharana, there's effort. It's, you put your mind there. When it's dhyana, your mind stays there. Flows. Tatra means therein, referring to the dharana, the first limb. Pratyaya is the flow of the mind's content, or the mind stream, as they say in the Buddhist culture. The flow of the mental content. Pratyaya. Ekatanata. Like if you, if you have something and you stretch it, it becomes like a single thread, like a marshmallow or your bubble gum. Right? You stretch it, it goes from a cluster, a clump, maybe kind of unorganized, and, and in that stretched out part, it becomes a singular thread. Eka, one, tanata, stretchness, having the quality of being stretched into eka, into a singularity. Ekatanata dhyanam. So this is the definition of dhyana. The object was chosen. It's not accidental. The state of attention is not accidental. It was chosen. And then from that, if the mind begins to flow smooth, like when you pour oil, it flows so smoothly. Water doesn't flow nearly as smoothly as oil does. Oil has a really, like, soothing, smooth quality to it. That's the way the mind, when it goes into dhyana, has that sensation. And that's the second phase of meditation. Tatra Pratyayaikatanata dhyanam. Tatra pratyayaikatanata dhyanam. So, one thing in dhyanam, if you remember the last limb after pranayama, before the meditative limbs, there's the sense withdrawal, the pratyahara. Pratyahara. 
Oh, in dhyana, when your mind starts flowing, the senses are also enveloped in that process. So the pratyahara is part of this uh, experience. The external stuff, because your senses are now flowing on the object that you're concentrating on, the external things seem to have disappeared. Samadhi, the eighth limb, the peak. Tadevartha matra nirbhasam svarupa shunyam eva samadhi Tadevartha matra nirbhasam svarupa shunyam eva samadhi Tadevartha matra nirbhasam Swarupa shunyam eva samadhi. So, if dhyana continues and sustains itself, then that process where the mind is flowing on the object, that, that begins to be the only thing appearing in your mind. Nirbhasa. It's appearing in your mind. And then also one begins to feel a sense of uh, boundlessness between you and, and what your attention is fixed on. This is samadhi. Called shunya. The boundlessness. So tat eva, tat eva. Tat means that. So that process that started with dharana and went into dhyana, that can serve if, if only the object is shining in your mind, um, then certainly, eva means certainly or verily. The Artha Matra, the purpose of that object, or the essential nature of that object, the Artha. Artha means purpose or meaning. The things that it, or maybe it could mean what it needs. It could mean what it needs. That's part of a purpose. Matra ni means only. Nirbhasa is the shining. The shining means it's shining. So the first aspect of samadhi, samadhi has two aspects. The first aspect is this um, artha matra, only the purpose of the object uh, shines, nirbhasa, in your mind. That means also then all your supposed ideas, all the things that you know from the past, the, your thoughts and your memories have receded into the background in order to allow the object to shine in your mind. Only the object shines in your mind. That means the other stuff that you're carrying along with you has receded. It's not recycling, recycling, recycling. Uh, oops. Swarupa is your sense of being. This is me, and that's the computer, and that's you guys on the computer screen, and this is me, and this is definitely me, and that's definitely not me out there. So that swarupa, my sense of being, where my boundary is, or where my boundary is not. Swarupa shunya, shunya means empty, or void. So if the swarupa becomes void, you, your boundary then becomes dissolved. And eva, it's not like you actually dissolved. Eva is a simile, means it's a simile. So it's as if your boundary dissolved. Your sense of being has become limitless, boundless, or merged with the object. 
we, you lose your sense of individuality. So it's very similar to, to dhyana, dhyana and samadhi. You know, both with dhyana, the surrounding awareness has fallen off because the mind has become pleasantly attached, comfortably, effortlessly attached to its object of attention. In samadhi, there's also a sense that's very similar to that. The only thing appearing in your mind is the object of attention. So what's the difference? that both of them negate the peripheral deviances of your attention. Um, but samadhi, right, the memory recedes to the point where you lose that sense of self. It's a much more profound experience. It's like when you fall asleep, right? You lie down, you turn off the lights first, actually, and then you lie down, right? And you get quiet and you be still. So this is a dardana. You're setting yourself up. You're putting uh, some boundaries around your activity to make it conducive for you to fall asleep. Before you fall all the way asleep, there's that middle stage. So that's like dhyana. You've fallen in. You're not awake anymore, but you haven't got all the way into sleep yet. So Patanjali gives us this term, sainyama. And sainyama is a term that Patanjali is going to use when he's talking about yogic concentration or yogic sight. Sainyama, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. He doesn't use dharana and dhyana and samadhi when he's talking about concentrating on an object. Trayam ekatra sainyamaha, trayam ekatra sainyamaha, trayam ekatra sainyamaha. So these three, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi, are a single meditative process engaged on the same object over a long period of time. So either sitting for a long time, concentrating on it, or returning again and again and again to the same object, day after day, month after month, year after year, etc. Sainyamaha. We say this M, the Anuswara, the M dot. We say it like an N with a tilde. Sainyama, because of the palatal semi-vowel that follows it. Sainyamaha. Traya means threefold. Trayam ekatra. Ekatra means in one place. So again, Patanjali is referring to place. Just like the first word of the third chapter is desha. Desha bandhas chittasya dharana. First word, desha. So where is your attention? Where are you allowing your attention to go? Where are you placing your attention? Be mindful, be conscious of where is your attention? Where is it going? Where is it wandering? Put it somewhere on purpose. No matter what you're doing, yeah. Where is your attention? You should always know where your attention is. This is what brings the mastery, the third chapter. Desha. Um, so in the sutra number four, if you say sarva, sarvatra, you put tra at the end, um, the word atra or tatra, atra means here, 
Tatra means there. So tra is a suffix that means place, has to do with place. Sarvatra, everywhere. Ekatra, one place. Trayam ekatra sainya maha. So these three Dardana Dhyana Samadhi in one place over a long time is what we call Sainyama. Traya means threefold, ekatra, one place, Sainyama. So the main thing is like this analogy of falling asleep. That's why Patanjali can't, can't quantify or um, say it has to be dharana or dhyana or samadhi. In this case, it should be samadhi. In that case, dhyana. It's according to how you, the state of your system, the state of your subconscious, um, the, the tendency of your subconscious system. That will determine your ability to concentrate or not concentrate, how long you can concentrate, how clear your concentration will be, how stable your concentration will be. Just like for people, they become unhealthy as they get older, they become more unhealthy because they're not taking care of their body. They're doing too much living to eat instead of eating to live and doing all kinds of things that are hard on the system. They start to have difficulty sleeping because their system is not healthy. It's out of balance. So even though they turn off the lights and they lie down and they try to lie still, then they can't lie still. They're tossing and turning. They can't fall asleep. You know, they fall asleep a little bit, but they can't go all the way asleep, you know, because their system is not set up. It has lost its conducivity to sleeping. So the same thing with meditation. We can sit down to meditate, but only if we've cultivated our system in the right way and prepared it and got it to a certain level, will the, the mind be able to actually go into meditativeness. So that's determined by a much larger thing than just what your intellect wants to will to happen. You can will your leg behind the head, maybe. You can will your hands to your heels in Kaputasana, maybe. But you can't will yourself into samadhi and while neglecting the rest of your lifestyle. If you have too many worries, too many dramas, you're concerned about what so-and-so said about you and you're sitting there trying to meditate and you think, I'm just going to set those things aside, you know, but they keep percolating back up. You, you know, the quality of your concentration is being affected by the way you've cultivated yourself. Too many attachments. You start thinking about the next version of the iPhone coming out. Or what you wish you had for dinner later. Because dinner comes after Yoga Sutra class and thinking about dinner. And I really wish I had pizza. I want to be able to go to the restaurant again. I'm tired of this quarantine. I think I heard, I read in the news they're going to have and your meditation is be having all these things come up so potentially it's going to give us after this section after 8 9 10 11 9 10 11 and 12 are things we need to do to prepare the system so it meditates better we're cruising right along one of my, uh, what do they call it, resolutions is to get through in a little less than an hour instead of a little more than an hour, I think. That would be nice if the videos were less under an hour instead of over an hour and our time get back to dinner. So the next two sutras, they're pretty simple. This, the first four we just did, those are the main things to understand. So anybody have any questions?
Alexis, do you have a question? No? Okay. It's clear? Uh, this foundation of this opening discussion is not so much to be able to understand what comes next, but to be able to practice what comes next. To understand what we're trying to practice. So the rest of it's going to be where do we apply where? Remember the first word is desha. So, where, so the rest of the sutras are going to be about where we apply this uh, this principle of meditation sainyama tajayat prajna lokaha tajayat prajna alokaha tajayat prajna alokaha so from Sainyama arises knowledge and insight. Tat means that. That's Sainyama we we're just talking about. Jaya means having mastery. Victory. So you've mastered your Sainyama. From that, Tajayat, Pragna, Alokaha. Pragna means insightful wisdom. Pra in Buddhism, they say prajna, prajna, prajna. I don't even know how to. I don't know how to say it wrong, the non-Sanskrit way. Prajna, I think prajna, prajna, prajna. There we go. Prajna, 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 prajna. Uh, prajna means wisdom. Aloka means illumination. So from adeptness in Sainyama arises unique, full of truth, insights about the thing you're paying attention to. The insight and the knowledge and the wisdom that arise, they arise according to, to how well the mind can pay attention. This is what we just talked about. How stable is the attention? How, how much does your memory, how much do, do your thoughts, how much can you settle them down? According to how much you can settle down the memory and your thoughts, the more clear, the more stable your attention and the more clear your, your attention will, will be. And the corresponding knowledge that you gain will have that quality of clarity or lack of clarity according to how well you can settle down the restlessness or the memory in your mind. Patanjali, he told us this actually in the first chapter. A lot of these notes I didn't go, go over. He told us a lot of this stuff already in the first chapter. He talked about samapati before. Samapati, where the mind gets quiet and you can, whatever your mind happens to pay attention to whatever gets close to your mind well the more quiet your mind is the more it'll appear in your mind but then even if you're thinking right the, the if the mind is quiet there might still be thoughts the object will still appear in the mind but if you can shift more towards listening feeling and looking and less less of the thinking less of your memory working then it be, starts to become really clear, much clearer. So the mental faculty, how do we get away from thinking? We focus more on listening and feeling and looking at your object. Automatically, that the contents of the paying attention to your sense data will dis start to displace your language thinking, recycling of the memories and the thoughts that you have. The more you can just feel that object, that thing of your object of your attention. Just look at it, listen to it, 
Listen to your breathing. Feel your breathing. Look and feel in the quality of your eyes when you're doing your yoga practice. It changes the whole way you feel about being yourself. So he told us, when you, when you get deep into that pers- state of being present with your perception, it becomes full of truth, ritambara, tatra pragna, ritambara, tatra pragna. And it has in that knowledge that you're getting, that pragna that you're getting is different than stuff you were told or stuff you might have read, somebody told you or you read about it, or you reasoned it out. It's your direct perception. You're directly experiencing this knowledge. This interaction between you and the object is revealing things to you. So it's very special. It's vishesha. uh, Vishesha. And immediately relevant to the needs and the nature of the object. Tajayat pragna lokaha Tasya bhumi shuvini yogaha So in, in this, what you learn over the years of being involved with the subject doesn't come to you all at once. It comes to you in stages. Tasya bhumi shuvini yogaha And your ability to apply and cultivate your sainyama doesn't come all at once. It comes in stages. Vini yogaha. It's appropriated out to you, bit by bit. Tasya bhumi shu vini yogaha. Tasya is uh, the possessive form of that. So that process has, right? Levels to it. Bhumi means level or stages of development. Vini yoga means that it comes step by step or it's, it's um, like rationed out to you little by little. So our capacity for sainyama is coming bit by bit, gradually. Uh, let's see, what's your job? You know, one thing, I always remember actually when Guruji would say, all do your practice and all is coming. The thing that stood out to me was once in a while he would say, one by one all is coming. Which I always felt was very significant because we all want, we want, in, we want immediate gratification, instant gratification. But it doesn't come that way, it comes slowly. So this thing about practice and all is coming. You know, when you put the all, one by one in there, you have more of a sense that it's really, it's a lifelong process, little by little, and you have to be just dedicated and steady. If you have dedication and steadiness, but no talent, but you're dedicated and you practice every day, you can make a lot, a lot of progress. If you have a lot of talent, but you don't apply yourself, you don't practice, uh, not so, not so good, not so much. If you have talent and you practice every day, then you can become top level. Right? But the person who practices every day, studies and practices every day, he can get pretty high even without having a lot of talent. The steadiness, the faith, that it's coming and it's okay just to be right here where we're at. And over time, right, if it's coming little by little, you have a chance to assimilate it, integrate it into, your, into the fabric of your being. Asmita rupa. So you go through the different dimensions of discovery of the object that you're working with, vitarka, the gross level, vichara, the subtle level, layer by layer peeling away your understanding of the subject, your skillfulness in the art, 
that you're involved with. And because of the amount of time you're spending, it integrates into the fabric of your being. It becomes asmita rupa. Okay, so the, the last two sutras, seven and eight, um, this is a, a technical trivia note. So the first five limbs were considered external and the last three limbs are considered internal. So relative to the first five, the last three, Dardana, Dhyana, Samadhi, are internal. It's a relative thing. I'm, I'm in my house, which is in the city, but I'm outside of Mexico. <laughs> you know, it's relative to whatever um, two things you're comparing. Otherwise, there's no internal or external without a comparison to something else. My thoughts are inside me, which are inside the house. If I go outside, my thoughts are still inside me, but my body's outside. Trayam antarangam purve bhyaha. Trayam antarangam purve bhyaha. So yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, and pratyahara. These are external limbs. And dharana, dhyana, and samadhi are internal limbs. Relative to one another. Triam threefold, antar internal, angam, limb. Purve, purve, byaha. Purva means previous. So these three are internal limbs relative to the previous limbs, the previous five limbs. I can go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, so it's relative, right? So these limbs are actually considered external if they're compared to nirbija samadhi. Tadapi bahirangam nirbi jasya. Tadapi bahirangam nirbi jasya. Tadapi bahirangam nirbi jasya. So, in relationship to nirbija samadhi, the sign yama or the dharana dhyana samadhi are external. So nirbija samadhi refers to um, going beyond your mind's limitations. Where you have to cultivate uh, a foundation for being able to know something. Like the more you work with gold, the more insights you have with gold, the more you understand gold. And the more insights you're going to be able to have about gold. So your meditation is supported by the years and years of working with gold. Or if you're a banker, right? Or if you're a, a jeweler, your insight and your knowledge of gold is quite different for the banker than it is for the, the metallurgist or the jeweler. So they have a different knowledge base that supports their attention when they're paying attention to gold. They're looking at gold in a different way. And so they have different type of insight according to the some scars that they've accumulated and cultivated. So nirbija is beyond having that history, a bit uh, a state where you can access information, and that's all we need to say about it.
There's one side note with with Pratyahara, the fifth limb. Like Pitabi Joyce would always say that Yama, Niyama, Asana, and Pranayama are internal. And then he would group Pratyahara, uh, sorry, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama are external limbs. And he would group Pratyahara with the internal limbs. So there's four and four instead of five and three. But Deshkachar more or less would say that Pratyahara is an intermediary limb. It's neither external nor internal, or both internal and external. Because the senses is, is, you can't really give it somebody an adjustment in pratyahara either. <laughs> and it's a little bit more like going from dharana into dhyana to get the senses to really uh, drop off all the extraneous uh, other input so that you're not noticing uh, the sounds of the horn, the cars going by, the train or the airplane flying by. You're only focused here. So that's more like getting into that state is more like the process where the analogy we made of falling asleep. Where the dharana, you set yourself up for the context of meditation, you choose your object, and you start to quiet your mind. But if it's actually going to slip deeper into a state where it flows, that's according to the luck of the moment and the history, how you've cultivated your system, if it's conducive to that or not. So this concludes our opening discussion. This is the what Patanjali wants us to apply throughout the rest of the sutras of the third chapter. We already have a foundation in asana and pranayama. So that's a given. That doesn't need to be repeated. You're using those tools. In addition, you're adding this new dimension to your awareness and understanding. Comment? Ting ting. Swasti prajabhyah paripalayantam Nyayena margena mahi mahishaha Go brahmanebhyah shubhamastu nityam Lokaha samastaha sukhino bhavantu Kale varshatu prajanyah prativi sasyashalani Desho yam ksho bharihitaha Brahmana santu nirbhyaha Aputra putrina santu putrina santu pautrinaha Adana sadana santu Jeevan tu sharadam shatam Sarvesham swastir bhavatu Sarvesham shantir bhavatu Sarvesham purnam bhavatu Sarvesham mangalam bhavatu Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschid Tukabhag Bhavet Om 
Shanti 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 Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat Brahmar Panamastu